Well, come on, guys. Well, it's not all about superchargers and litre bikes on this channel, you know. I'm going to be doing a little bit more around middleweights. And this is a middleweight I've been absolutely so excited about trying out. This is the new CBR650R, courtesy of my wonderful people at Wheels Motorcycles in Peterborough. Check the link below. And let's roll the intro. Do it! This is my first impressions review. I've literally just jumped on this for a little thrash around, see what it's like. Seating position, it doesn't feel like a true sports bike. It's far too comfortable for that. You're sat a little bit up, mostly upright, but of a little bit cantered forward, a little bit cantered forward onto these clip-ons, which aren't particularly low. They're super comfortable, way more comfortable than the ZX6R way more comfortable than any litre bike, thousand sports bike. This is sort of an intermediate position. I'd say actually it's quite a similar position to the H2 SX. It's sort of got that slightly touring sports bike feel to the riding position. Your legs are up a little bit, you know, not, not full on naked positioning, they're back a little bit. It's a sporty feel, but without being too uncomfortable is how I'd describe it. I'm 6'2", 18 stone, I'm a big guy and I can tell straight away the suspension is quite soft on this. As soon as I get on it, <laughs> it sinks down considerably. It's got shower forks but they're completely non-adjustable, not even any rebound or preload, nothing. Completely unadjustable forks from what I can see, cannot see any uh, adjusters on them, top or bottom. The rear shock is just adjustable for preload with the adjustment collar. So the suspension is fairly straightforward. It's also got a quick shifter, would you believe? They've actually chucked a quick shifter on this as well, which seems to work very nicely. It's, it's not particularly fast, but it's very smooth. The gearbox is also very smooth on this, super easy to find neutral. Controls are all, again, very easy, very nice clutch feel. It's an easy bike to ride. It can be A2 compliant with a map change, so they can reduce the power down. Hello, mate. Yeah, all right. The display is LCD display, very, very similar to the CB1000. It could be identical, perhaps. Very similar. Um, it's obviously that new Honda layout they're going with. The switch gear is big. <laughs> very solid feeling. It's almost like over big it's like it's been enlarged by 20 percent or something it looks really really big but it's nice to use it's, it feels good quality the whole bike the quality of it is very very nice for a 7700 pound bike all of the fixings the fasteners are really nice the paint finish is lovely it changes direction nicely flips over no problem the bike is quite heavy it's 207 kilos, I believe. So it's no lightweight. It's a little bit flat, and then it starts to wake up about seven grand. The tone of the engine changes. You can feel a few vibrations coming through the seat and through the bars. Yeah, it's a bit vibey when it goes up sort of past 6,000. You can actually really feel it for your ass and on the bars. Fair few vibes there. It's not got masses of torque. I think it's definitely an engine you're gonna to have to rev if you wanna get the best out of it. It's got a 12,000 RPM red line. If you really work it, it's actually pretty quick. Surprising. Suspension is actually reasonable. soft 
<laughs> yeah, that's actually pretty good fun. It's, it's nowhere near the performance of the ZS6R. I mean, it's 30 brake horsepower down, and, if, and it's slightly heavier than the ZS6R for the same size engine and a straight four. So <laughs> I don't know why. Why is this bike down 30 horsepower on the ZX6R when it is actually got a more capacity and the same engine configuration? I think it's probably because Honda really wanted that A2 compliancy. So perhaps it's a little bit detuned. Perhaps there's more available from this with a bit of, a bit of tweaking. But saying that, if you let it rev, it's good fun. Suspension, as I say, is actually pretty good when you're pushing on. It's not bad at all. This is fun. This is a fun bike. Brakes, yeah, really good actually. I like that front brake. That delivers good feedback, good power. Quick shift is lovely. That's the beauty of these small capacity bikes, you can give them, give them the full beans without going crazy speeds. <laughs> yeah, yeah now, now I'm revving it a bit more. Now it's starting to work for me, now it's starting to do things. Stir, the, stir your soul. on the brakes way well, nearly at the pigeon hang off you can yeah you can Power. down through the box all oh, slightly uphill we're missing that torque once you hit that power though it it does rewards. Yeah, handling is nice. The handling is very nice. It's not too sharp. You can see it's geared up, you know, as a as a fun learner bike. That next stepping stone from your from your learner. I think it'd be a good step to go from your one two five onto something like this. You know, it's, it's all pretty easy to use, it's pretty, the power's not too severe, the handling's predictable and stable. You can see where Honda, where Honda are coming from with this. Well, it is just a little bit sluggish, a little bit, when you compare it to the ZX6R. Yeah, the ZX6R is a much more expensive bike. That's a £9,500 bike, this is £7,500. Now, so it's £2,000 more expensive. But I can't help feel with a ZXR, you are buying a real sports bike. Quick shifter, it's quite slow, the lower revs, but it's perfectly smooth. You don't feel like it's damaging the gearbox or it's been too aggressive on the gearbox which you do think that sometimes with some quick shifters not that one that's nice and i think it's lovely that it's got a quick shifter for this sort of range of bike to have a quick shifter that's incredible the thing looks like a million dollars and i'm not sure it quite delivers on the looks it's a bit of a sheep in wolf's clothing as you can see it's a good looking bit of kit the front end of this bike looks seriously sexy. I mean, it'd be hard pushed really to tell the difference between between that and the fire blade from the front end. I actually think that front cowl and lights look better than the fire blade. It really is rather good looking that fairing. They've done a hell of a job making that look sexy. I do agree. But then you get to the back of the bike, and it does all go downhill a little bit. <laughs> I know the tail tidies are disgusting. Get rid of that tail and get a nice tail tidy on there. 
would make a big difference but uh, but the fairing and the front headlights is the best thing about the bike the looks of that is amazing but I think overall it's done a damn fine job the quality of the bike is exceptionally good I mean all of the fixtures and fittings on the engine all the, all the stainless steel bolts the rear sets are really nice you know aluminium rear sets the exhaust is nice and small under slung uh, the actual wheels themselves look very much like the fireblade wheels the paint is high quality you've got these little inserts of sort of plastic but they've got a carbon fiber look to them which which looks really looks okay i'm not normally a fan of fake carbon fiber but it looks okay and there's more of it in here on this grille section the, the uh, scoops inlet scoops already de lighting as i mentioned and that that face is a face to love because it's based on the cb650 naked you know it's not got a sports bike tail i mean where is the plastic tail they maybe they do a, an aftermarket sort of not aftermarket but honda do a genuine accessory for a tail because that i think would finish it off bit of a tail bit of a seat cowl single seat cowl on the back would make it look more sports bikey from the back it's just lacking a little bit of sports bike appeal from the back but the engine is a really good looking bit of kit the quality of it looks great these little plastic infills here you know it's all it's all pretty solid the whole bike feels pretty solid let's have a look ski under the seat have you got room for your sandwiches under the seat it's actually got a it's like a usb charger no some sort of accessory charger on there i'm not quite sure what that is but you talk it in there you've actually got a bit of room you've actually got room for your sandwiches as well makes a change the rev counter is very small i'd like to see a bigger rev counter it's really quite hard to see that for a bike you've got a really rev to get the best performance out of it i'd like to see a bigger rev counter really it's quite hard to see that it's quite small but overall i think it's good i think i like it for the for seven and a half grand seven seven it's a good looking bike for seven seven let's go back to that front end again the front end for me is what it's all about that looks very nice indeed let's jump back on so when this bike turned up this morning when wheels dropped it off to me i was looking at it i was super excited it looks incredible but riding it initially i was a little bit disappointed you know the performance is it's lacking in torque I was expecting a bit more from a 650cc engine when you think of things like the ZX6R even the uh, little SV650 with its twin V-twin gives a bit more punch than this so I was a little bit disappointed the feel of the bike it's quite small you know the suspension's quite soft you know it, I was a bit disappointed when I first started riding it I can't deny it but I've sort of respect, reset my expectations a little bit now. Yes, it's no ZX6R, but that bike is another £2,000, £3,000 more expensive than this. This is 7.7, the ZX6R is 9.5. So it's £2,000 more expensive than this. The SV650 is £1,000 cheaper than this, but that doesn't have a fairing. That doesn't have all the niceties and, and the quality feel that this has but i think it delivers a bit more on the performance front than this does so for 77 that is a reasonably priced bike hell you can't even buy a supermoto for that money husqvarna 701 will cost you eight and a half thousand pounds and the ktm 690 supermoto will cost you nine and a half thousand pounds so seven and a half grand for this bike with this spec with these toys, quick shifters, a nice LCD display, that, that seems like good value to me. Honda are obviously pitching this as a bike to move up to from your sort of learn illegal 125s as a stepping stone to something bigger. You know, people who don't want the naked look, people who want that sports bike look, and it does that, you know, it's, it's predictable to ride, it's nice to ride, comfortable, easy to ride and it handles well you know it's all it's all a little bit safe would be my only criticism with it it's a little bit safe a little bit too predictable but if you're coming up from that beginner segment 
Now that's what you're looking for. You're not looking to scare yourself to death. So massive thanks to Wheels Motorcycles for lending me this. This is actually their demonstrator. So if you want, if you want to ride this exact bike, give them a ring, book a test ride, pop down and see them, tell them that Lamb Chop sent you. I'm sure they love it when people do that. And they may even get you a bit of extra money off. <laughs> Sorry, Vinny. <laughs> But there we go guys, thanks very much. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. I love you guys. See you later. This is power level one, which is full power. This thing is absolutely bonkers. It's also pretty quick. Yeah, alright. Never mind getting beat up. Give me this any day of the week. Oh, <laughs> oh shit.